Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihei. Today's guest is a professor at the University of Hawaii and actually um, becoming one of our political pundits yes. here in Hawaii. You'll see him. You see him at every election. He's the guy that people t uh, turn to for any advice or any trends or anything dealing with politics. We are so lucky to have you back. You were here two, two three weeks ago, and we uh, we were it was right after the debate yeah. at Kamehameha Schools, and we exactly. were talking about who were going to be the winners and losers and so forth. Now we know. Yes. At least we know the uh, from the primary election. So. What are your thoughts in general? Tell us a little bit about this election. Well, I guess a lot of what we predicted was going to happen did happen. Right. Um, but it was really up and down. So, I mean, the most surprising thing, of course, is that, that Governor Ige won. I mean, he was down 20 points. Some internal polls had him down 24 points back in March and April. Right. And he came back and he, he beat Colleen Hanabusa by, by seven percentage points. So in politics, that is really that an was incredible pretty, pretty, turnaround. That pretty, was uh, pretty incredible. Yeah, and yeah. He, and he did it um, in a relatively short period of time. Exactly. I it, mean, what do you Give me some of your thoughts on what are the factors that led to that. Sure. I think it's really two things led to this. The first was that... Colleen Hanabusa really didn't run a good campaign. I mean, you know, it's difficult because there aren't big ideological differences between both of them. Yeah, so, that's one yeah. thing. You know, I, I remember doing some interviews and people asking me what the differences were. And I really, really, they weren't any. No, minor, minor stuff. Minor ways yeah. of approaching it or exactly. something. But they, yeah, they were not ideologically no. too far apart. So really, it was a campaign based on personality, right? I mean, who do you trust more? And Colleen Hanabusa wanted to frame this as, a, as really a referendum on, on Ige's leadership stemming from the false missile alert. And that, you know, was the darkest days of the Ige administration back in January, and he was still paying for it when those polls came out right. in March. The problem is, I think Colleen Hanabusa and her team got a little complacent, maybe a little arrogant, certainly a little lazy. Um, hmm. She made the decision not to resign from Congress, so she wasn't in the state for a crucial period, I think. Um, and, you know, the way I can characterize the campaign, it seems like she was really harping on the missile alert. Then we almost didn't hear from her for several months. And then the campaign started up again in June. But in that time, uh, Ige really was able to consolidate some support. He also got a little lucky, which is the second thing. I mean, I want to say lucky politically, not for <laughs> yeah, the people. Yeah, you better who, be careful who, yeah. how you say lucky. Right. Not, not lucky for, for everyone who had experienced, had to experience the floods on Kauai or certainly the, um, the eruption on the Big Island. But for Yeah, the, in fact, there was some, uh, some pundits who said that Madam Pe was that you? Who said, Madam Pelly? Uh, I don't think it was me, but but I agree with the sentiment um, that he, you know, this allowed him to show leadership. He was on TV all the time. He was really visible in both of those disasters. So I think it caused some people to give him a second a second look. Um, but also, I mean, really, you know, Neil Abercrombie said this, and I agree with him that. That uh, that David e that um, uh, that that David Ige can't win, but Colleen Hanabusa can 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 lose, right, right. and I think I think that kind of sums it up. I mean, it goes to show that you know a strong campaign is is essential, even if you think you're going against an opponent who's really weak. You know, it, it was amazing because uh, again, I, I I don't have the stats, and you may eventually, or you may have it now, but it seemed like the amount of money that was spent on these. The, the governor's race oh, yeah. was actually a lot less than normal. It was less than normal. I mean, well, yeah. partly we're comparing it to when Ige defeated Abercrombie. Right. And Abercrombie spent about $10 million. So that yeah, was. Yeah, uh, Neil spent a lot yeah, of money. That was a, and, that was a big and money. And he was race. an incumbent, and you would expect an incumbent to have a lot of money. Uh, David didn't seem to have <laughs> no. frankly. And, uh, you know, and so th you're right about that. I don't think people have talked about that much, but overall spending was, was lower. Um, you know, really, the, when we, we talk about money and how that played a role in this race, you're really talking about one organization, which, which is, is the be change now, the Carpenters Union, right. exactly. And, you know, okay, let's, uh, we obviously know D D uh, David Ige won the governor's race and, and so forth, but the Carpenters 
in my opinion, were the real losers. Oh, really? It, because, yeah. because they were backing Hanabusa. Well, not only Hanabusa, but in general. I, you, you know, I, I'm, uh, yeah, um, well, they won the lieutenant governor's right. race. I mean, their endorsee right. won the lieutenant governor's race. Well, they spent race. a million bucks on that And, and there are some people, myself including, who, who, you know, are a little cynical, and we see that if you spend that much money yeah. to win that particular position, which comes with no immediate, right. uh, you know, no immediate anything, authority, you, you must can, You be, can do name changes. That's yeah, the only thing you have. Yeah. Because, it, well, at yeah. least in the past, when I was lieutenant governor, you could. Um, you were in charge of elections, right? I was in charge of elections. Yeah. So we had something to do. We, I yeah. mean, we, in fact, uh, you know, and I, 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 I'm convinced that elections were, ran better when you had somebody who thought they could lose an election if they didn't, right. if it didn't run perfectly, you know? Exactly. But and nevertheless, so um, what are you doing? Well, the only thing you, it looks like you're investing in is the fact that the incumbent governor can only serve one more term. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's the investment. Yeah, and, and, and so, the, you know, you're looking for, and so maybe that would, in the long run, make them more strategically a winner. But for all the other races, yeah, that where they went negative and so forth, uh, it, I don't think, I don't know of a single one where they won. Do no, you? I think you're right about that. I mean, you're, if you're talking about the two most high profile ones, they, they lost, the governor's race, right. because they, re they really didn't start funding Hanabusa until late in the game, I think yeah. because they thought she'd win. Uh, they didn't need her help. But the second big one is the city council race, Carol Fukunaga's Oh, seat. they really were, they were really uh, nasty with Carol. Yes. And, th and she, as it turns out, actually won enough not to be in a runoff. And, and the Carpenters-backed candidate, um, um, uh, Tyler Dos Santos Tom, he got third. He he came in third, and I think it was largely because of that. There was well, a I think, huge I think there was a re, uh, the, there was a reaction. Yeah, to it. And, absolutely. Uh, and and you know, it might have been. I don't know what the future will hold for negative campaigning. It's too attractive a drug. You know, it's, it's very addictive. <laughs> but at least in this election, uh, it seemed like the voters just said, you know, we're not going to be. Uh, we're not going to be taken in by all of that. Yeah, I think I mainly agree with that. I mean, that was true about the false missile alert that the Carpenters were running well, against Ige at the end. It seems like people really were turned off with they, that. They, they got tired of yeah. it. You know, one of the things about Ige was that it turns out to be pretty hard to run a negative campaign against sure against David because he's a nice guy. People like him. He's they a trust nice him. guy. He's yeah. a, you know he hasn't done anything. He's pretty. He's a pretty ethical guy. Yeah. He hasn't done anything that can be considered uh, negative. You know, and so what else you got besides the, the you know the the uh, the missile crisis? Right. And then he go and all of a sudden he's found his voice. Right. And he's been much stronger. You know, I I, uh, yeah. I I uh, watched him over the course of the election, and and he, and he actually really grew in terms of public persona. I think so too. But the Ige people, they they did a little bit of negative campaigning. I think it was more subtle, and it made it more effective. I mean, they were reminding people of this land deal in Koalina that yes, happened a long yes, time yes, ago. Yes, and just, yes. they, they were subtly suggesting <laughs> maybe Hanabusa wasn't that trustworthy. You know what is so funny about that is that the land deal that happened uh, it really was built around the idea of building on the quarry. Quarium, right, right. right. And, 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 I, you know, and so forth. And it, the many of the people or the organizations that were uh, bringing that up in support of David, because uh, I think there were some like pack type yeah, uh, yeah. suggestions were people who had actually supported the... <laughs> I didn't know that detail. Yeah, that's yeah. See, that's great. the problem with being in politics uh, uh. for too long. Were people who wanted the aquarium, <laughs> you know? That's, that's and, really And were lobbying for the tax. So this is a kind yeah. of weird election. Well, you know, the other sense, ironic you know? thing is a lot of the people on the EGA team were, were Abercrombie people. Well, almost 100%. Yeah. Almost 100 The people... That the Ige, well, when Ige ran the first time, you know, you had uh, Governor uh, Ariyoshi and Governor Caetano, Caetano. And, and I was with Governor 
he get, I yeah. mean, Governor Abercrombie. Yeah. You know, and along with all the people. And then when in this race, we all went over and actually helped Governor Ige. Yeah. And so it, it says something about our party. I don't know what exactly. <laughs> Maybe some scholar like you might find out. But it showed that there was flexibility in the situation anyway. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, surprising. Well, for me personally, for me personally, I, I, I had a hard time in this election. Because I actually personally really like uh, Congresswoman Hanabusa. Mm -hmm. I actually was helped her campaign twice. Yeah. And I am convinced that had she stayed in Congress, she would have evolved into one of the most, yeah. uh, you know, most important uh, people there. But on the other hand, you know, uh, I, uh, as a, uh, with David Ige, he, he was the kind of person that actually grows, in my in opinion. In the office. In the office. He actually visibly grew. And doing this campaign, he did too. But what about the, the lieutenant governor's race? Now, outside of right. Josh Green, Josh, sure. you know, Josh is. I, 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 we were at the Unity Breakfast yesterday, and I looked at the governor when Josh was up there giving his speech, and I said, you're going to have a really interesting time <laughs> in the campaign and, and later on. But because Josh is, is uh, well, he's a medical doctor, yeah. right? And he doesn't mind telling you that he is. I know. No, I think it's every every third uh, sentence. Uh, sir. But I mean, I, I, I said this. I was at the law school this morning, you know, and uh, talking to the kids, and I was talking about how things have changed in, in politics. And I said, you know, here we got the lieutenant governor candidate talking about sharing a doobie right. with another lieutenant <laughs> the state senator. And the state <laughs> senator. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I remember when politicians were saying they didn't inhale. <laughs> you know? And exactly. here we are all these years later. And I said, this is going to be an interesting it, race. It you is, know? it is. It's going to be an absolutely interesting race. I, 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 I'll predict something, though. I, I think that uh, Andrea mm -hmm. is not going to be someone that they can take for granted. No, no, I agree. Her party is in shambles. I don't know what kind of ground game, if all, that they have beyond a few, you know, probably district-level people. Yeah. But she is a very intelligent, very articulate. She connects uh, well with people. I mean, she's the sort of Republican who can win in this state. She really has a lot of local support. She's been involved in her community for years, and well, she's, she not, can, she does, she's not ideological. Yeah, and she can make it past any type of ideological, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> ideological trap that's yeah. out there that may not fit with uh, people uh, in general in, in the state. But the, Democrat, the Republicans just have, at least here, just have a terrible oh. time running. In any event, I mean, uh, Kucinich was on television the other day, and he was talking about this is a party that just a few years supported free trade. Yeah. And, and now, now they're putting tariffs on. Uh, that used to be a Democrat position, in a sense. It oh, was yeah. the worst of all. It's what right. caused us to start losing elections was that we started to become protectionists. Exactly. And that's going on. He says, as, as a family-based, supposedly family-based uh, uh, party, we're sponsoring policies that separate children and families. Even if you're worried about immigration, why would you do that? And, you know, debt, yeah. I mean, the wall is going to cause because this country to go into huge debt. For, for no good reason. And so the party's really changed. And don't you, you know? think it's that it's that brand that makes it so hard for Republicans here to get any sort of oh, I, That's why I, mean, I think that just... uh, we, we had a discussion uh, uh, on election night. I had a discussion with... Oh, with Sam Republican. Sloan. Yeah, with Sam Sloan. And you know Sam, he's he's your nice little guy that you know forever upheld the Republican flag, a little to the right of Attila the Hun, <laughs> but a nice guy, you know. Yeah. And then I and Duke Iota was yeah, there, and yeah. he's a little to the left of Attila, yeah. but not much. <laughs> and, <laughs> And they, they're going to have an interesting time trying to rebuild a party. Well, they're going to go from five seats now to four. Wow. Because their Republican candidate for Andrea's seat um, was disqualified because they don't even American have somebody Samoan. running. No, no, no. They can't win it. They have no one running. Oh. So no matter what, the best case scenario is they go to four. 
Well, I tell you, we're going to take a short break right now. We'll come back and we'll talk about more winners and losers and other ex exciting uh, issues with this recent primary election in Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e and my special guest, local political pundit, Colin Moore, professor at the University of Hawaii, and I guess you're the head of the uh, some kind public of policy center. Public yeah, yeah, so yeah. this becomes something that you, you should know a lot yeah. about. Okay, winners and losers. Yeah. Winners and losers. Okay. Biggest winner, biggest loser. Okay, biggest winner, obviously, is David Ige right. um, and the Ige yeah. crowd. The losers are, well, certainly Colleen Hanabusa, but beyond that, I think, um, is, is more generally, actually, the old um, Inoue group of, the old Inoue political class here in Hawaii, right, actually, in because Colleen Hanabusa lost, Jill Takuda lost, who is also backed um, by some of the, the folks around uh, Senator Inoue, um, strong political figures like Jennifer Sabas. Um, and, uh, and, and that, I think, is really, I mean, that's a big moment here because th those have been power players for a long time in the state. You know, that's um, right. That's right. And they have, um, yeah, and they've been active. Oh, yeah. And, and all the people that they seem to be associated with um, and, didn't do well. And, and, and along with that, I mean, another person who is um, you know, certainly an associate of the senator and a, and a major political figure is Mayor Caldwell. I think he was a big loser last night, too, because the candidates he was backing, um, people like Bobby Bunda, um, uh, yeah, it's interesting Tommy that Waters as a mayor, didn't perform well. As a mayor, he went out and, and, you know, in a sense, tried to elect a consul that was closer to himself yeah. politically. And uh, that didn't happen. Uh, no. I, I, I was, uh, frankly, that one race that surprised me, well, there were a couple races that surprised me, but the one race that surprised me was Bobby Bunda losing on the North Shore. I, I didn't think that yeah. was possible. I didn't either. I mean, and he, it's not that he lost. He, he lost badly. Right. It wasn't even close. And, and so maybe the third group, I'd say, of losers are older established politicians trying to get back into politics. So you could say Clinton well, Key, been? Bobby Bunda, oh, um, there's sort of a group. Who were, uh, Joanne Yukimura on Kauai. She, that's right. She Joanne got third, third place um, against Kawakami, who, who dominated that election. Wow. So a lot of these old timers trying to get back in did not do well. How did, uh, how did Gary Hooser do? Or did he run? No, he all? didn't run. He didn't run. Okay, but he, he, he was uh, actually smiling on election night and telling me that he was sort of happy with the results some of his progressives got, but I, I didn't see anything. So maybe, um, so the only person I can think of who would have been in that group who won is Amy Peruso, who won um, in, um, in uh, District 45, well, so, or know. 42, um, which was filled by um, uh, an appointee, Lay Lermont. But that was a surprising victory, although overall I'd say the progressives didn't do well. I mean, so the, the most well-known who ran on that ticket is Kaniela Ng. Yeah, you know, and Kaniela, Kaniela is, was an interesting race, yeah. you know, because he, he took a lot of progressive positions. And I think that when the financial reports come in, he probably had a lot more money 
than people realize yeah. uh, for a campaign that didn't take corporate contributions, which shows you the power of the internet. Oh, power absolutely. Of raising and, money. And he was backed by national progressive organizations. I mean, um, 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 the, the Democratic Socialists of America were increasingly influential. I mean, he, a lot of mainland interest in that race who were convinced that he was going to perform well. but. But he got 6% of the vote. It wasn't even close. I, I, I know that uh, for a lot of people that were early on thinking about, uh, you know, giving him a chance at least, the, the whole episode on Danny Noy. Yeah, that was bad. The campaign spending violations. And the campaign spending bad. violations. I, in fact, I heard some young people, um, which is, uh, you know, I, I actually felt sorry for him, for him on, this, on that issue. But I heard some young people yesterday talking about the fact that, you know, if you're going to be a pure progressive, you better know something yeah. about your finances, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and they were, what they were saying was they didn't vote for him because of that issue. Yeah. And I, I said, well, you know, everybody ought to have a second chance. Yeah. Which is, by the way, something that works better for... Uh, the religious right, right? <laughs> you know, because they start off thinking people are sinful to begin right. with, and, you and can therefore be redemption yes. can happen. You yes. know, the trouble with the left, <laughs> the yes. religious quote unquote, the secular <laughs> left, is that there's no redemption That's possibility. Right. That's, Poor right. Kaniala, That's right. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. He, he suffered with that. Although I'm not sure, he, no matter what, he would have been able to. What about the carpenters? All right, and their guys. All right, so negative campaigning. Negative campaigning. A lot of negative campaigning with them. I mean, their one big victory, of course, was Josh Green. Right. Um, the candidate, they, they put him And there. it was the one candidate which was uh, pretty much positive. It I, was all I, positive. I, I cannot right. think of or remember a single Josh ad that was negative. It was all positive. I mean, it was it was Josh Green with babies. It was Josh Green at the hospital. It was Josh it Green was, ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> looking like the greatest guy ever. <laughs> And they didn't, they didn't go negative in that race. I mean, they could have gone negative against Jill Takuda because I think one of their motivations in backing Josh was, was that they the, were angry at, yeah, at Jill. Jill. Um, so that, that worked for them. I mean, and in a crowded race like that, you're really talking, I mean, that's really a moment when money can make a huge difference. A lot of unknown candidates, I mean, you know, we tend to think these people are really well known, but among most of the electorate, even if you're a state senator, nobody knows, oh, nobody who, you knows are. who you are. So yeah. spending that kind of money I really remember when I, when I was lieutenant governor, you know, I, I, my uh, communications director was a gentleman called Chuck Friedman, who you might know. He works now for a set yeah. of shots. Um, and I used to tell him, your job is to get me on the, in the media every day. <laughs> and then when I became governor, and he was my communications director. Your job is to keep me out every day, you know, because politicians don't realize yeah. it. They think everybody knows who they are, but yeah. they really don't. And it and the Carpenters did a good job with the uh, with Josh Green's election. They did, but they didn't do a good job with everything. No, on the negative stuff, they yeah. just it, it just didn't work. And it didn't work. It didn't work against Ige. Those false missile alert ads. Right. I think they. In fact, what I heard from some internal polling was that actually. It, it was it was hurting that those ads were, well, they were getting people tiresome. less likely. Yeah, yeah they were getting they tiresome. They were tiresome. And then they had this really brutal, I mean, one of the really dirtiest mailers I've seen in a long time against Carol Fukunaga. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, you know, and that didn't work. And it, it hurt. In fact, it probably elected her. I think it did. It, it, I think Even she got stronger. more support. So it was a big they failure. They endorsed um, a Tyler, Dos Tyler, Santos Town. who I thought, you know, as a young uh, guy in the party, had a great He's future. a strong candidate. He's a He's, strong candidate. And, he, and he, to have, you know, to see where he ended up. It, it's uh, kind of surprising. It was to get a third place, and I think I think that was due to that that mailer. I really do. I think it it, people, it, it hurt him. I don't know if people realize this, but it, that isn't the first time that Carol had to face not that particular issue, but a, uh, a smear type campaign. In the first campaign she ran for the House of Representatives, it came right after the '78 Con Con. This is a little bit of history yeah, for you, yeah. history buffs. And she was in a crowded race for uh, in the Manoa seat, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, her opponent, uh, who uh, was a protege of one of the leading senators at the time, I'm not going to name names because 
we have all forgiven and forgotten each other. But anyway, <laughs> he, uh, uh, they came out with a very negative uh, ad accusing her of stealing furniture from the Constitutional Convention. Stealing furniture? Yeah, really? which is like incredible, you know. <laughs> so and so, so I, I, she's going to hate me for telling this story. She really is. But so, <laughs> for, fortunately for her, right after that happened, the news people interviewed her, and she started a little teary-eyed, saying, I never stole anything in my life. And she won the election. You know? <laughs> and so don't do that. To, yeah, uh, to yeah. <laughs> doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, Ed Case. Ed Case. So no surprise that Ed Case won. Well, beautiful campaign. Yes. I, people talk about him going in late. Now, that was all nonsense. He was running for at least three oh, months before, yeah, before he filed. Absolutely. I, I, you know, Ed, Ed has ran before, and I, 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 and I don't never thought that he, you know, ran any campaign that was worthy of reproduction. But this time, he, he f did everything uh, that almost perfect. And coming in late was a strategy. Look, none of those other candidates adapted to the reality that he was in the race. Plus, they just kept when he plugging came along. In, the day that he declared, the second later, his campaign was oh, in full yeah, swing. Oh, yeah, exactly. It, it, it wasn't one of these things where you declare and then you wait two or three he weeks while you try together, to get it yeah. together. He, you know, he, he did it, and he... He was sign-waving the next day. <laughs> I saw him. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, his wife, Audrey. Yeah. She's always been a real asset, <laughs> asset but, you know, uh, and so his son is at the University of Hawaii now, and I happened to be uh, at a class that he was at, and I, I told him, I said, you know, you, your dad ran a good campaign, and, you know, uh, congratulate him, really. And he, uh, he also did something that I thought was really interesting. He uh, put, his campaign was support, uh, supported by a bunch of younger mm -hmm. millennial types who were actually disenchanted with the uh, far left rhetoric mm -hmm. of the... Uh, Kaniala. Of the of Kaniala, and, and who were part of that group. Yeah. In other words... They were part of the group that was were Bernie Sanders' revolution, mm -hmm. but they wanted to really work for somebody who, uh, and I don't know what, uh, you know, what screening process they went through, but they ended up with it, yeah, with uh, with uh, Ed, and they they were, in my opinion, they are some of the most, uh, uh, some of the best gr modern. Grassroots people that I know, yeah, uh, you know, because I, 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 t I tell you, um, uh, Bernie Sanders ran a great, oh yeah, young people's campaign, and if for Ed to attract that, you know, I, I might even decide to give him a second chance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have one time when we could have been campaigning yeah. on the same side. <laughs> what do you think? So, so one th question I wanted to ask you is: is the the leadership of the legislature was against David Ige in this campaign? They all backed clean. You know, do you I, think that's going to make it tough for him going well, forward? Well, I, I think that it would behoove uh, both sides. Yeah. To forgive and forget and move on. Mm -hmm. And if I was David, and and if I were them, I would try to look for a. Uh, coordinated package mm -hmm, for the first mm -hmm. session. Yeah. I, I would try to, you know, meet together and, and go into some hard discussions and come out with a united package, yeah. which I, I did uh, a few times when, when I was governor. Mm -hmm. But I, I would think if David had a chance, he should do that. And if I was Scott Psyche, I would have tried to do that. Ron Kochi is probably more amenable to that sort of thing. He sort of stayed. He was a, with Hanabusa, saw it off. Yeah. But not as deep as Psyche and uh, uh, Sylvia. It looks like they're gearing up for a fight, though, with this, these disputes about the amount of money requested yeah, by Harry well, Kim that, on that the was, Big that, Island. That was and, really not, it, sound, it didn't sound democratic. Yeah. I mean, what you ought to say is we'll do whatever we can to yeah. help the people of the Big Island. Yeah. You don't say well, mm -hmm. this is a payoff for this, or, right, or right. We, we're going to make sure. I mean, you don't do that to people who just lost their houses. It's, yeah. it's, it, but it's, maybe it's part of the maturation process. Yeah. But if they want to be mature, then what we ought to do is have a democratic package. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you very much. My pleasure, my pleasure. And folks, we'll be back in uh, two weeks, and maybe with more exciting political news and advice. Aloha.